Hello there. In this video, we're going to see the building blocks of an IoT example. Let's imagine that you have a light which you want to automate. You want to make this light a smart light and you also want to control this light remotely via a phone from the internet. It's a simple example but definitely a useful example. Somebody said that if you can switch on a light, you can practically switch on anything. Now, the fun begins when you have another light, you program these two lights to talk to each other, switch on and off in a sequence. For example, that when light A is on, light B cannot be on and things like that. So that's when the real fun begins of IoT. But let's try to stick to a simple example where we just want to control this light from a smartphone from the from the internet let's take a look at the parts involved the first thing is we need hardware when we speak about hardware the first thing which comes to our mind is the microcontroller so this is your arduinos your raspberry pis your node mcus intel edison all of these are different variations of microcontrollers with different capabilities then we have shields so Wi-Fi shields your Bluetooth shields your Ethernet shields all of them are under shields they extend the capabilities of your microcontrollers then you have the electrical components like resistors then you have electronic components like capacitors you have semiconductors which are basically your transistors and then you have electromechanical devices like relays which actually control the light. Now in this case what we're going to do is fix a relay in between this connection and then we're going to connect this relay to a microprocessor and then on top of which will be a Wi-Fi shield and then this is going to be connected to the internet and we are going to log the values of this light into a cloud DB and then this phone can read the values from the cloud DB and using a cloud platform I can write back to the device and switching the relay on and off so that's pretty much the plumbing what we have to do now obviously at some point we have to start writing the software so let's take a look at what is required as software now the first thing is you need drivers so that both sides of the party understand each other so what you write in software the hardware is able to understand you need libraries which are pre-written code by makers by your device makers by other programmers libraries are essentially pre-written code which you can reuse in your program you're going to have some kind of cloud database uh, or a platform which has a database to log entries to read and to do other activities like triggering obviously we need a programming language like C and a development environment where you can program what else do you need well you need a little bit of everything you need integration skills you need designing skills at some point you're going to be optimizing your board you're going to be um, you know soldering you need to know how to set it up so it's just a lot of uh, um, fun activities involved in this whole process and obviously a lot of skills are involved in this whole process you're going to be troubleshooting you know every minute from my experience what i feel is two important skills are required one is your imagination you need to have some amount of imagination which i believe all of us do and ingenuity to find issues and to solve them these two and plus the skills which i just described can you know enable you to build great products thank you